Hello, my name is Luis Wiesmann and today I will talk about LOCKNDF, Neural Distance Field Mapping for Robot Localization. Localization answers the question, where am I, where we want to know our position in a given map using sensor observations. In the automotive domain, sensors like this LiDAR are commonly used. These provide point cloud data of the surrounding of the vehicle at up to 20 Hz. Knowing how our environment looks like can help us to find our position in a given map. In this work, we want to investigate how to model the environment such that we can localize our LiDAR sensor in it. When we have a constant stream of the point cloud data and know our position, then we can accumulate these scans to a point cloud map as here denoted in blue. Now we drive maybe a couple of weeks later again to the same environment and we want to know where we are in respect to our generated map. What we can do is we can take the current scan here in red and try to align it with the reference map. Our goal in this work is to find a suitable representation of the observed point cloud data. This model should be memory efficient and well suited for localization. The unordered point cloud structure of the raw sense observations is usually not well suited for mapping. It does not have a notion about free space, we measure a lot of redundant points and it lacks structural information. Therefore, in the robotic domain, these distance fields are more commonly used. The map consists of a grid where each cell stores the distance to the closest surface. The problem is that the memory consumption of those grids grow cubic with increasing resolution. So if we want to have a high resolution model, we need to store a lot of data. The key idea to resolve the problem is to bypass the inefficient storage. In this example here, we see the distance field of a scene. Now, instead of saving each individual cell, we learn a function which tells us for each position the desired value. In this case, we have a circle with radius 5 and offset 8. As you can probably imagine, storing the parameters of the function is more efficient than storing the whole grid. Additionally, we can simply evaluate our function for a desired position without running in any resolution problems. This is of course a very easy example and yeah, for a scene like the one we saw before, it is probably very hard to find the underlying function. Therefore, instead of com coming up with one analytically, we can instead approximate it by a multi-layer perceptron. Now, the network should predict for each position, x, y, z, the distance to the closest surface. This is the so-called neural distance field. Now, we know what we want, but we still need to find a way to learn from the input point cloud representation our neural distance field. And second, we need to see if this representation is also useful for localization. So first thing we have to do is to construct our map. For learning those neural distance fields, we exploit directly the measurement process of the LiDAR scanners. The sensor is measuring the distance from its origin to the surface. Now we can sample points along the ray and enforce the network to predict always the distance to the surface. Instead of directly supervising with the measured distance, we project it onto the normal of the distance field to supervise with the distance to the closest surface instead. The normal can be simply computed by deriving the distance field by its position. This can be done either analytically or numerically. After training, we can then query an arbitrary location and the network provides us with the distance to the surface. After we have constructed the map, we can now try to register a new scan to it. For this, we can use an ICP-based approach, similar as in classical RGBD SLAM systems. For the registration, we first compute the gradient to the, uh, of the distance field at each position. This gives us the direction in which the points have to go to reach the closest surface. Now we can compute how far we have to go by simply evaluating the distance field. This we can then do for all the points and estimate the pose update. We do this iteratively until it converges. Here we can see our approach running on the Apollo South Bay dataset. We have learned the blue map from a set of scans. The position of the red scans can then be tracked by always registering it to the map. Be aware that the scans for mapping and registration are from different points in time. Therefore the scene changed, for example due to cars parking at different positions. As you can see, we are still able to reliably track the position of the car. The blue mesh here is extracted by marching cubes, 
but is only for visualization. The registration is solely done with the neural distance field. In this work, we have investigated how to learn a neural distance field from point clouds that can later be used for localization. We developed a point to neural distance field based ICP to register scans to our neural distance field. Our approach can achieve centimeter precise positioning while consuming 30 times less memory than the grid based approaches. Now, we have only talked about 3D scan registration, but if you are also interested in learning how to use a neural distance field for Monte Carlo localization in an indoor environment, then please check out our paper or GitHub repository. Thank you very much for your attention.